There is no giving these boys stage fright. I'm gonna eat my hair, that's fine. All right. Oh, no! Don't go fall in love with it. Whoa. Minus 14 degree barn this morning. So I have to get that thawed somehow. Say hello to Mr. Big. Wow. Busy, busy. Wow, this is Friday entertainment at its best. <laughs> this is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> there is no giving these boys stage fright. I guarantee that. They're men. Mark says they're men. Well, it's good to see. I don't know. They're picking each other's wool. It could be lice. Today's the 14th, uh, and on January 1st, I casted that little brook. Hi, big mama. Sorry, she distracts me. I casted that little baby's leg because it was very broken and it's been walking really well, but I really want to take that cast off just to see how we're healing. How are you? You know I'm after you, don't you? Can I look at your leg? Okay, I got my little baby. So we're gonna just see how this healed. Can I find the little spot? So this is just this is just vet wrap with a little splint that I used underneath. Yeah, that stuck really well, didn't it? Okay, there's a little splint that I had. It's basically just a little um, really strong cardboard that we cut in half. You can't use like a paper towel roll, it's too flimsy and soft, but these were good. I think they're off a cricket machine roll. So we'll see how it, it feels pretty good so far. So it's been almost two, week, two weeks tomorrow. So we'll see how this healed. It was a bad break, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna eat my hair, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, you're pretty chill. Let's see, did it heal? Oh, I think it did. Maybe not quite yet. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. If you guys remember, this leg was like, you could, you could do like 90 degrees and you can't now. There's tension there. There's definitely some scar tissue high BB here. So I don't know if it's quite healed, but I don't feel a break. I don't feel a space there. So I think it has come together. I might, re I might recast it though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch her walk. Yeah, I don't think it's healed yet. Not quite. She was walking with the cast. Not so much. Kinsey? I think it's still. I just want to see you walk. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's quite there yet. All right. Oh, no. No, you're going to break it more. Okay, we're talking to mom right now. Mom, it's okay. <laughs> I'm fixing her. So we have a red cast this week. So we will check this again in another week or two and see if that gets a bit stronger. All right, I'm coming. All right. There you go. Don't go fall in love with it. Yeah. Almost as old as me. 
my muffler back together so I don't go deaf. Have you tried it without? Yeah, I just, uh, I think it needs a little bit of back pressure. So these are new? Did you just do this? Yeah, I got new plugs. I didn't see these last weekend. Well, looking hard enough, I guess. I guess not. She gone. What's that? Coming loose? Right. Let's go. my babies. Morning guys. Well, I hope uh, some of us kept warm last night. <laughs> it's a good thing they're in love right now because uh, that's creating some heat in a minus 14 degree barn this morning. It is cold. So it'll be interesting to see how much it warms up through the day. Typically in this barn, it's not insulated. Typically uh, when the sun's out, and it's really cold like this, we can have a 10 degree, five to 10 degree uh, difference inside versus outside. So I think it's supposed to be sunny today, sunny and cold. So I'd be interested to see what it is outside versus inside. I'll keep you posted on that. It looks like Team Red is still being, <laughs> keeping warm. This is my pen that's got a lot of bald boys in it. So uh, I think they're just being creative in the ways they can keep warm, which I don't blame them right now. I texted Chris the first thing this morning. I said, let me know what's frozen and what needs charged or boosted. Our telehandler's getting serviced this week and I'm pretty sure we need a new battery in it. I thought we replaced one like a year or two ago, but I don't know for sure. We have to charge it anytime it's under like minus five in the barn. We keep it plugged in overnight, but it's not even helping the situation. So I just boost it when she goes to need it. Um, I believe the hoses were froze on my milk machine Thankfully though, the room did not freeze. William. So it's nice to know that um, the insulated little room I have here and a light bulb, that's all I have in there, is keeping that machine from freezing. I think you guys are gonna get weaned this week. Hey? I think so. Yeah. I think so.
matter. I uh, apparently don't know the physics of how to put in a light bulb. I do now, until the next time I go to do it. Let there be light. Okay, now to put up the next fire. That one's frozen. All right. Well, here I thought my uh, machine wouldn't freeze, and the machine didn't freeze, but the hose, the input, water input, did. So this doesn't feel frozen, but this out of the uh, float is frozen. So I have to get that thawed somehow. Get a heater in here. Yikes. Okay, upon further investigation, we have a little more going on than what I thought. Um, I had a heat tape not working on my intake hose. Just this like, I don't know, four or five feet. So I went, ran to town again, got some more heat cord, another extension cord, because I might actually put some heat tape up on the intakes in the actual room as well, just in case it gets cold. It's supposed to be feel like minus 28 again tonight. So I just don't want to take any chances. These guys are so close to being weaned and then I can get this machine out of here and into the warm shop. Well, it's uh, getting late. <laughs> We've been out here all afternoon. Um, turns out I redid most of the heat tape all on my intake hose and it ended up being like a two inch little gap right here that was froze solid. So I got that thawed and it still wasn't running. It still wasn't filling the float. And I'm like, what is going on? Well, I think it just took a bit for it to get to the float. So then the float started working. The machine still wasn't getting water. So indeed it was that, uh, that big clear hose that I put the tape on, but it just takes too long to warm up. So we do have a little space heater in here, warming up this room and uh, hopefully we can get it going. The thing is we're gonna get this going overnight, but then the hoses are gonna freeze. <laughs> And right now they just got some warm water. And honestly, I was gonna wean them anyway. Yesterday, uh, we have a, a, just a wee little bit of milk replacers trying to get through and uh, just got nipped with this cold weather. This is the first time this room has froze. Um, and then Mark's like, you better go check your water bowls. And sure enough, I had two water bowls froze. So we got those all apart and we're starting to thaw it and Mark just kicked the float and the float was just froze in a spot. So uh, they do have heaters, heating elements in the actual reservoir in the bowl and I think uh, we didn't have the breakers on for those so we turned the breakers on so hopefully they should stay thawed overnight. They're not drinking a whole lot of water because it's too freaking cold right now anyway. I think we got this almost beat but uh, it's probably gonna take another hour to thaw. Oh I think we got it actually. As soon as I put the camera down I checked it and I think it's working now. We have milk! Happy babies! Happy mommy! Happy nanny! Milk! Oh, thank goodness. Alright, we're golden. You're welcome. morning another uh, blast of winter yesterday we actually got off lucky the rest of Ontario got hammered uh, and the snow belt which is us typically uh, didn't get anything until last night we got a little sprinkle so Mark's out cleaning yards and Chris is here doing chores and I am just looking at my calendar as to what to plan next uh, I did text Charlie yesterday so we have 
tentatively put shearing off until next Friday. Um, we're just supposed to get some really cold temps this weekend and he had he had offered up this Friday and I said, you know what, let's, uh, we're pretty soft here. <laughs> let's just hold off until next Friday. It doesn't look as cold. Um, now, we do shear even in the winter. They do stay warm. The pack is warm. The barn is cool. We will, um, we will supplement uh, with a little more feed, which helps, which helps meet their energy, the required energy that they burn off trying to keep warm. So uh, fear not, they, they will be fine. And the wool grows pretty fast, uh, even after we shear. But we are getting sneakily close already to this March group. Uh, that's going to be lambing here and I like to shear about eight weeks before breeding This is going to push us to about seven weeks and then right after that probably like the next Monday We're gonna start hoof trimming and vaccinating. So when Chris is done here, we're actually gonna go across the road It is Tuesday. We're gonna go across the road and weigh up some market lambs. It's been two weeks We're, we're pretty much on the every other week program if there's lots we might end up starting to uh, weigh these every week <laughs> We are uh, just about ready here to weigh up the market lambs once again. When we're done today, we're actually going to put all the ones that aren't ready on one side. I think they're actually slowing down on their gains because there's not enough on both sides. They've got ample room and sometimes you need a little competition for these guys to keep growing and to keep competing for food. Not too much. You want everyone to be able to eat when they want to eat but you do need that little bit of competition and I just don't think this group has had it because our numbers have been very nicely spread out. Um, so there's like a, there's a happy medium there. So we're just letting the Gallagher warm up here and uh, get the session going. Um, if they're 105 pounds or over, they once again will get put in the, kind of the shipping side here and uh, they will go on the truck tomorrow evening. December, January, so because what day is it today? Yeah. It's not that yet. I guess you got your string off, Carissa. <laughs> they always catch us when we uh, when we don't do what we usually do. All right, guys. You gone? Come on. Just keep going. That one looks like a Texel. No. That's it. And we have 18 ready to go. 
this morning's weigh session. I thought I'd just go over the stats with you guys because I don't think I did the last time I shipped those lambs. They did a lot better than they than I thought they would and they're not as old as I thought. I, I was thinking because they're born in September, September just feels so long ago. Uh, most of them are only in and around that four, just four months or just a little bit over four months. Some are a little bit under four months and they did really quite well. There was 18 that were ready to go. So I've just got my Gallagher here. I thought I would just quickly go over the main things. Um, so there was 18 in the group. The minimum weight was 105 pounds. The max was 140, and that was a ewe lamb. She was a monster. Uh, so the average weight of that group this morning was 110 pounds, which is, uh, phenomenal I think anyway I'm just curious as to who kind of are the first out the door 89% uh, of the group this morning were Rito sired and 11% were Ile de France uh, does that work out 11% uh, Ile de France yeah there was no Suffolk no steel no nothing in that group so that's interesting but last last time I've already shipped 16 so some of the earlier Suffolk probably ram lamb singles might have already been out the door. They are doing better than I thought. We did end up putting them all to one side. Uh, they've got two foot feeders right full. Just to keep that one side even warm enough, it's supposed to get here real cold again. Um, and those water bowls, the, the spigots tend to freeze pretty easy. So we find if we keep them all on that south side, the south side warms up quicker. Um, there's enough pack in that barn. It keeps it fairly warm and that barn is actually insulated in the ceiling it makes a big difference compared to over here So when we were struggling in here this weekend all weekend there was no issues across the road I did turn off the fresh air bags and close the curtains just to retain all the heat we can get But we have to watch that so as soon as it warms up like a day like today and tomorrow We actually have to open everything back up and turn on the fans again uh, because it can get way too stuffy so as much as that barn's really nice, it's still very, very manually run. So you have to, you really have to be, you have to be on top of it. I just thought it was interesting to go through those stats with you. I hadn't done that in a while. And uh, yeah, they did better than I thought. So I'll be shipping those tomorrow night uh, after, after work. <laughs> Hello, big mama's boy. What are we gonna call you? Mr. Big? Oh, Mr. Big. Say hello to Mr. Big. 